Hey everybody. Okay, so what I'm going to do today, I got a a new controller for my RigidBot Big, uh, which is a 3D printer, rather large. Uh, it's a it's been a it's been a fairly decent workhorse. I think I'm too loud. I, it's been a fairly decent workhorse, but it does have some uh, some mild problems, like the um, the stepper motor for the uh, the extruder stopped working. Um, it looks like it's probably the board, but I also don't have the capability to really dig in through the uh, through the PCB and figure out what the heck's wrong with it. So, what I decided to do was do an upgrade because the RigidBot is um, a <clears throat> an open source project. What I can do is I can put in a different controller board. Uh, the controller board is based on an Arduino and a ramps board, which allows for the control of everything. And I've got um, I've got the board here. It just arrived from Alibaba, uh, which is basically the um, uh, China's version of Amazon, essentially. So here is here is the new board. It is a Rumba. Let's see if uh, see if the camera adapts. There we go. Uh, Rumba board model version 1.1, open source 3D printer electronics. Uh, gtech.com made in China. Of course, it's made in China. Everything's made in China these days. Now, a little special because it actually has uh, one of the micro USBs as the uh, the data input. And let's see, what does it say here? That's not a very good uh, good shot. Can I zoom in? Uh, I can't zoom in anymore. Let me see here. Try to make it better for you guys. There we go. Okay. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is... Uh, HE0, HE1, HE2... So that's going to be heater zero through two. This is supposed to be able to actually handle three extruders. Uh, so that's going to be the three different ones there. And then there's, let's see, fan zero, fan one, and two powers. I'm going to need to look at the wiring diagrams. This also has the end stops for um, there you go. Uh, so that you can calibrate it for auto leveling devices. Uh, EXP2. I'll have to look at what all these little guys are. And XYZ controllers. Extruder 0, 2, uh, 1, and 2. Now, I do need two on the Z-axis, so I'm going to have to figure out how that's going to work. I'm told that this is going to work, because I got it off the uh, off their forums. Because my, uh, my particular um, printer has two Z-axis, so that it can go all the way up with, uh, it has two arms and two stepper motors that will then take it up on either side. I can show you... Let me see if I can then show you with this uh, with this little guy here. There it sits. So you can see that it has uh, two z axes on either side that will then allow the bed to go up. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, let's come back over here. Okay, let me go get that board, actually. Okay, so I see that I have one viewer, so that's nice. Okay, so this is the, the board from the previous uh, RigidBot. 
they modified everything to, to all be um, a all-in-one solution. Let's see if it will actually, there it goes. So this is the Ridgebot mainboard. I don't know exactly what got, uh, <laughs> what got changed on this. But they integrated everything that is on, on this board and then some into this. Um, and now that I look at it, I'm wonder wondering, it's like, where did you put all the chips? So these are actually the, the stepper motor controllers. Oh, okay, so they're actually running the Z-axis. See, there's the, there's the two for the Z-axis. So they're running it uh, on one stepper controller. I guess you can do that. Yeah. I don't see why not. The stepper motors are pretty... Pretty beefy, pretty robust. Uh, so let's see. So yeah, there's X, Y, Z, and this is the extruder. The uh, stepper motor for the extruder, and all the other things. And then they've got these cute little heat sinks, and these heat sinks um, are very similar to the ones that. Uh, also, if you want to see the back, you now there's a. Oh, I'm going to have to cannibalize power supply now that I look at it. Uh, okay. Because that was the power supply that, uh, that came with the original one. So I'll have to rip it apart and figure that out. That or buy another power supply. Um, and that's the power switch. Okay. Reset switch. Okay. So they, uh, they came along... This board has them integrated, but most boards do not. These are the stepper controllers. Here they be. And they're going to be pretty simple, just uh, zero insertion force. Well, no, they're not ZIF. Um, they will just go right into there. Of course, I better key them properly. Hmm, which one is which? Why is it not focusing? There it is. So that's a tiny, tiny little little chip. Anyway, th this does... This sends all the control information directly to the, to the stepper motors. Stepper motors are fun. Because basically, um, as they go around, you know how if you move a DC motor by yourself, if if you just you know twist on the uh, on the axle, it'll want to stop at individual locations. Well, on a stepper motor, it has windings. That's where it's stopping. It, it will stop as those windings go around, and it will stop at at each one of those. With stepper motors, you have an awful lot of them. Enough to where I think that's every five degrees along the 360 that you can get them in different uh, different configurations. I believe the ones that I have are are, are five degrees, um, which is pretty good because then it has to has to rotate uh, considerably before it'll ever well it has to go all the way around by stepping something like four thousand times um, for a full revolution. Now these are. Yeah, these are too big, aren't they? Yeah, I think that's a little too big. Cool, though. And, hmm, maybe that'll work. No, because then the metal is bridging those connectors. That's probably a bad thing. I don't think we want to do that, do we? Let's see, is that going to show? Come on. Darn you, autofocus. Why is that focus not working? There we go. Yeah, we don't want to do that because then it will bridge the connectors on both sides. No, that's definitely not what we want to do. Okay, so fortunately they did send a package of heat sinks. Looks like I will need to do my own cutting though. Because they did not include, you know, pre-cut heat pads for them. 
they did at least include one for each of them, so that was nice of them. Now these are these are also beefier than the tiny ones that came on the rigid bot board. Yeah, that's better. So we're we're gonna have a um, a much better board that's going to be um, you know configured for uh, you know much greater heat dissipation rates. Again, I need to make sure that once this gets put on, that it doesn't bridge any connections. I think we'll be good. Those are pretty big. So I'll need to get some scissors. And then I can start um, start applying these and then get them in here. But I also need to figure out how they're actually going to sit. I wonder if it matters. Ah, yes, it does matter. Okay. So it looks to be... like this. Mm -hmm. At least that's the way it looks. Need to verify one more time here. I think that's it. Based on everything that I'm seeing so far, this is accurate. But I definitely need to find instructions. Instructions would be helpful, wouldn't I? I think that'd be a good thing. I'm probably going to install I'd like to, oh yeah, I can definitely put a big old heat sink right on that guy, which I believe is the Arduino controller itself. Let me see if I can show. Hmm, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot, does it? I believe that's how it's supposed to look, though. Okay, let me put that back on autofocus. There we go. Yay, things are mostly in focus there. Now I'm going to look at the controllers and try to find out how this all works. Why is it not... Oh. That is unfortunate. Guide to setting up the Roomba with RigidBot. Yeah, that website's dead. That's not good. Okay. Let me show this. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the RepRap open open source uh, wiki. And it has the steppers with their pot down. That's what the... Um, this little guy here... 
Whoa. Focus. There we go. Um, it has a little control so that I can bring it up or bring it down to make it go faster or slower. Basically by increasing the voltage, uh, which would increase the number of steps. Okay, That shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so in my recorded video, this would be where I would stop it, or I would uh, then fast forward while I go ahead and, and cut these guys up and attach all the uh, all the heat sinks. Or I could just press them all in and then do it, I don't know. I might as well do that, I guess I could go through and do that. nice thing about this is I can always take them out again. Also, I have I have people that I can talk to about uh, whether or not I've done it wrong. And I will probably chat with them. Uh, that would be the folks over at Physics Anonymous. The, uh, the brothers Wilhelm. So that I can verify that I've done it right. And don't blow up my new investment. There we go. Okay. There they are. Okay, so a nice thing also about this board is that it does have the headers <clears throat> for, you know, pre-made wiring harnesses for the stepper motors to go in here. However, if that's not your jam, you can also do these screw terminals here. Nice and simple. And this is the pattern for those. Yeah, so it goes 1, 1B, one 1A, one 2A, two 2B, two black, red, red, blue. So that, that should be the stepper motor controller wiring uh, diagram. I have another stepper motor. I'll, I'll go grab that while I grab the scissors. So don't go anywhere. Okay, so I have, these are the stepper motors, you know, directly from RigidBot, the rigid motor, 1334As, this is the shorter variety, these are pretty darn good, uh, really I haven't had any problems with the motors, uh, I thought the one had died, but I was incorrect, it was the controller, so what's nice is they do, they do have their flat axle, so that, that way when you insert uh, any of the drive cams or anything on top, you can then do the, uh, the set screw and then it will go around and make sure that it torques on it. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear it. Okay, so each one of those, that's where it stops. As I turn it around. Uh, so there's a lot of windings in here. So here we have the colored wires on the wiring harness. So, let me see. Black, green, red, blue. So it would be just like that. But it looks like they're spaced just far enough that this wiring harness it's going to have to go bye-bye. Oh, so close. Nope, that's not going to work. So close. Really, it should work. I'm looking at that. Ah! <laughs> they do. Okay. They do insert. With any luck, I mean that's kind of a weird, weird angle for it to be at, though. Oh, 
dropping things left and right. I'm not the most graceful creature ever. Okay, but that's pushing things. It's pushing things a bit. So perhaps this is not uh, not the best thing to have have on there. So I will probably be removing the wiring harnesses that are currently attached and using the screw terminals on this one, I believe. So no harm in trying, right? Okay. So let's see here. Got um, got these guys. Looks like I might be able to do nine per square. Looks about right. It's arts and crafts time. I'm just making approximate cuts, really, because these chips um, are actually much smaller than, than the surface area. So it's just a get it as close to the middle as you can, and that'll work. And six is all I have, so six is all I need. I can leave the rest on there. Let's see here. And then the biggest pain in the butt is always removing the double-sided tape from these guys. And you want to keep it clean. Definitely want to keep it clean. In fact, what I've done here is probably already wrong. Uh, let me go get alcohol. Not the beverage variety, but definitely the, uh, the wiped variety. So that I can clean the surfaces to verify that they have good adhesion. So I'll go do that. Also, if um, if you like what's going on, you know, you can always follow us at AureliaRadio.com and follow the Twitch stream and subscribe to the channel. Who knows what I'm going to end up doing next. This is just my little project for Tuesday. Uh, also, I do have the chat room up, so if you want to talk to me while I'm doing this, you sure can. So uh, hang in there. I'll be right back. I'm right back real soon because things things are not as far away as I thought they would would be. So I've got uh, some 91% alcohol solution. That ought to do it. I would be using Q-tips or something like that, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do that this time around. I'll just use uh, some paper towels. Get in there real good. Clean off any machine oil. You know, much less the oil that comes on your hands. Who knows what kind of stuff was on here when it uh, when it left whatever factory in China? So I'm trying to do that. I'll, I'll just do them all at once while I got the got the alcohol going. That way, also I don't forget which one was which. You know, the ones that I was just cleaning. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not that I would be able to see the oils without, like, the aid of an electron microscope, anyway. And that's, uh, that's not really something I'm intending on doing. Okay, just so you can see my hands a little better. How's this demo rig working that I have here? I hope it's, hope it's sufficient to the task. Okay, got that going. Now also, let me do all the all the chip surfaces because we definitely want it to adhere very well on those. And again, we're using alcohol as as the scrub because alcohol will, as a solvent, will evaporate away 
very quickly and it, all it's going to do is leave a residue here on my my cloth as opposed to uh, getting in the way of the adhesion for whatever cons whatever stuff this is okay so these all look clean yep nothing weird going on there so I think we're in good shape so now I just have to manage to put these into place. Oh, look at that. I did, I did very well with figuring out uh, the basic size there. Okay, so I guess because that's the way I did it, I'm going to... Oh, oh geez. Okay. Uh, since that's the way I did it, I'm going to have the blue side be the part that actually touches the um, touches the chip. Though I'm not sure that's the right way to do it. But again, the things that come from China uh, very often do not come with an instruction manual. In fact, I, I just bought another uh, another 3D printer. Um, it's a, uh, a delta variety, so it's in, you know, a triangle shape. And we were going through it, and it's like, okay, it says that there's supposed to be a manual here. Where, where the heck is it? And what they had done was they included a USB uh, reader and a trans flash card, an 8 gig trans flash card. In theory, that was supposed to have some software on it. Uh, but lo and behold, it also had the um, the directions. It had the full assembly instructions all in the um, in a PDF file on the transflash. So that made it really easy. And hey, we didn't kill any trees, which is good. Okay. Oh, that's bad. That missed. Can I fix it? Oh. Okay, did you see that? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so it's it's a little stretchy. You know what? I, I think that piece has failed now. I think that piece has failed. I'm not going to trust it now. I'm not going to trust it. Fortunately, I have extra. I got plenty. Now, the, the other heat sinks, those, uh, like the big one, I put a whole bag of them for, like, a bag of a hundred of them with the, uh, with the tape already pre-applied. In fact, let me look at that. No, nah, it's a different kind. It's a 3M... Um, Proctor 3M. This is the bag. So I got a lot of them. But they're just just a wee bit too big. Uh, but I was planning, I, actually, I'm putting them, adhering them to the sides of the stepper motors, but really the stepper motors uh, don't get that hot. Maybe the ones on, um, on the Delta will get pretty hot. Um, but I know that the ones on the RigidBot, they don't get that warm. They're, they're pretty decent. Um, because they're they're not getting that much voltage, uh, they're getting only the voltage they need to make that one step, and then they move along. Um, of course, when you're doing continuous operations, these things are running non-stop, backwards and forwards and left and right, and you know the whole. Well, basically, just backwards and forwards. I guess it's a motor; it only goes two ways doesn't go any other way. You don't want any, like, thrust bearings or anything like that on them. Though you could have that, I suppose. Okay, and, uh, let's see. How about, uh, you, you in the middle. No, no, not the other one. There we go. There, okay. <clears throat> so, I've applied the adhesive to all these. And you know what? I think I'll do yeah, I'll do this one here first. Now, which way? 
if I was going to put a fan in here, I would probably want to put a fan on this direction blowing this way. And I have... I also had to replace a um, replace a fan on the other one as well. So I have a bunch of these guys. These are these are 24 volt though. So I may have to change some things a bit. Um, they're super quiet though. They're really nice. And the nice thing about these is even if I did run it at um, at 12 volts, it's just going to move slower. And it'll be even quieter. So that's not really going to be a problem at all, I don't think. Um, though I have an enclosure over here I might want to yank it out of. I could do that. I think I have uh, I have a, a Blu-ray burner that is in a, uh, a five and a quarter enclosure. And it has a little fan in it to try and keep it cool. And it is just the most annoying, loud thing that I keep it off most of the time. Speaking of annoying loud thing, this is, well not loud, but this is not wanting to come off. Maybe maybe it's a buyer beware thing. Or maybe I'm going crazy and the whole thing is supposed to come off. Hmm. Okay, yeah, there is a little bit there, so maybe I'm just being too picky about it. Okay, pull the whole thing off, Andy. There we go. Okay, yeah, there it is. You can just see it. There it is. That slight off-color stuff. So that's the adhesive. It's not much. So if I'm going to blow a fan across this way, this guy over here, so I'm going to blow a fan this way, I'll want the fins to all line up this way so that that way they carry away the, the hot air as best as they can to keep it as efficient as it can be. So I'll put this guy right here, line it up, come on, focus. There we go. Sometimes with these webcams, you just got to trick them. Give it a little twist. A little twist. Applying plenty of downward pressure. Twist, twist, twist. There we go. Okay. Oh, it's like it was made for it. Look, it covers the whole surface of that chip. Oh, yeah, that looks like it was made to be. Now we're going to have any problems with that overheating. That's going to dissipate fantastically. Okay. Let's see. Actually, can I put it on anything else? I do have another here. I believe that is the USB controller. Usually when it's uh, so close to the USB itself, it'll just pass right through. Oh, there is a USB header here as well, so I don't have to use that. I could use another breakout uh, if I wanted to have like a normal normal plug. I could break that off. That might not be a bad idea. And that says power. Oh, it's got a light. Okay. So you can just barely barely see it there. Power. And that is a light. An LED right there. So that will at least give me some information. Ah, and here's the transmit and receive LED indicators as well. So we'll be definitely looking for that. And here looks to be some voltage takeoffs. Ah, 12 volt select versus 24 volt select. Okay, I'm figuring it out now. Oh, so that's just the fans themselves. Okay, so I could I could select to have I could plug in my one of my fans here, just to blow across. USB power, standalone mode. Hmm. So many things on here. There's a lot more going on on here than on here. I mean, it's just, it's crazy, the differences. 
Okay. Time to put the other heat sinks onto the stepper controllers. There we go. Okay, blue's film is off. And again, we want to line it up. And I want to make sure that I'm not over anything bad. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, and now I just do it five more times. Now I'm not even going to use all these, because really that one, that one over there, it has the the two Z axis, and that's that's just going to be off this one. So I'll probably tin out. Um, so X, Y, Z. So I'll probably tin some tin some connectors and just insert them there. Um, just wire them together. A little soldering action. There we go. And that way it will be able to control both of the motors at the same time. Because really you don't want them to be on a separate controller now that I'm really thinking about it. You don't want them to be on a separate controller, because then they're just going to... Uh, there might be something in code that could be wrong, where they're not getting the right signal at the same time. So this way, if they're on the same controller, they're going to be pulling at the, same, at the exact same time, because that's when they're told to do so. And that's what definitely what we want. This autofocus guy is just like killing me here. That's good. I want it to be right up there. Okay. It took uh, it took Michael and I, um, Michael Wilhelm, not Michael Robinson. It, it took us uh, seven hours to put together the Delta. Seven hours. Of course, some of that was uh, just figuring out where the uh, <laughs> where the instructions were and things like that. Actually, no, I, I counted I counted that time separately because we weren't done until seven. And I was over there at 11.30 or so. So there was at least half an hour built in, of time built in there for uh, just messing around with whatever had to happen. Okay, so there we go. That's nice. I mean, yeah, they're not perfectly lined up. And if you're super duper OCD about that, I'm very sorry. Uh, next time you can come over and help me out. But otherwise, this is what that's going to look like. And now I need to figure out how I'm going to wire everything else up, identify all the other bits and pieces, and consider next steps. See what I'm going to do. I mean, I might be able to put another another of these big old heat sinks maybe on this resistor. Yeah, I can do that. Those guys get hot, right? Maybe I'm just overkill. Haven't been told that before. Hmm. That's one thing, though. You don't want things to fail. You don't want them to go go awry. Okay. I think that's probably going to do it for this video. So I hope that you have enjoyed watching me do the things that I do. And I'll see you next time. So, bye-bye.